Hi, and welcome to this video on how to make a short splice. This is going to be somewhat of a lengthy one with all the fiddly bits, so um, we'll just jump straight into it. So the point is to join these two ropes permanently. And to be able to do that, you have to unravel the bits and then join them and then ravel in the bits again or tuck them in into each other, so to say. So I'm going to start here with some small rope I'm going to use as help for uh, unraveling or keeping the, the ropes enough not unraveled to hinder the further unraveling, so to say. So we're going to start with uh, measuring here. We're going to measure one diameter of rope, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So somewhere here. And here I'm going to make a constrictor knot right here, and I'm going to make a constrictor knot right here. And that will be a separate video, I think, in the future. But you can you do like this. You start with an S, and then you pull it like that, so you get an eight. And do like that. You can you can most likely use a clove hitch as well. It's just that a uh, constrictor uh, hitch is a lot. It holds a lot better, but it's also like devilous to try and get out again. So for this application, a uh, constrictor hitch is is good because you don't want this to to unravel. And the way you get out again is by you can't really untie this after you've made the, uh, the splice. So, like that. I like this. And 12 is actually just something I've read that it should be good. I've never um, measured before, I just go by feeling. What you sh shall aim to do in a modern uh, plastic rope that has lower friction than the traditional hemp one is to get five tucks and by tucks uh, I will show you shortly what I mean but you should have enough friction creating components that it holds for my application I, it doesn't really matter so I probably won't do we'll see I probably won't do all the five um, but for for strength uh, application where it's meant to hold really good then the, the more tucks you have the better it is so, and then I'm going to unravel. So I'm going to cut this here because it's a three strand rope. So I just cut three into the melted plastic here. And we'll see how, how well this goes. Oh, that wasn't properly. So of course, um, with the hemp one, you have more friction. And that's why I need more tucks. Okay. And I'm not I'm not trying to cut the rope because I want these strands or the, the three different strands uh, to be to hold the, themselves together, not with each other but with themselves so I don't get a rope that falls apart on me. So now I've cut this, so now I can start unraveling. And of course, I mean, you can you could tape this here as well. I'm just going to make a brief knot here as well, just so I get less uh, ends to keep track of. So I have these, and I'm going to do exactly the same here. So if you're doing like me, uh, be really careful with the knife, so you don't cut yourself. I've read it's it's famous to get negative comments about knife usage at, on YouTube. Okay, so like that, and then unravel, unravel, unravel. 
and you want this because you want to kind of weave the other rope into the next one. So now I'm going to join these and I'm going to join these we're having like that. Let's see. Yeah, like this. So that you have a strand from the left, strand from the right, the strand from the left, and then all the way around like that. So that it's like this. As this you want them to keep being really tight together here. I'm going to take yet another part not a piece of rope. And we'll see. You could tape this, it's much easier, but I don't have any tape tape at home, so we'll have to do it this way. Then I'm going to do another um, constrictor hitch here. Because it's a useful hitch in this particular application. And uh, you really should, if you want to use a constrictor hitch for something, for something, you sh should research it for, for first because it's oh words, because it's really hard to uh, untie after you tighten it. So it's not good for all applications. For for uh, some applications, for many applications, it's quite a good knot. But yeah, so that will keep them together somewhat. And I'm going to start weaving this black one into the white one. So to do this I have to kind of open this up and you see I want to go over here and then under this here. So over this and then this. So I want to unravel a bit. And for this you if you have a marling spike um, it would be much easier because then you would just stick that through and then thread the rope through that with the help of that. Now I don't have one, so I have to do make do without. Okay, let's see if we can get something. Okay. Now the tucking and fiddly bit starts. So now I'm going to do exactly the same with this. But now, now you can kind of see how it works. Um, you go over this and then under this. So when where this comes out, this next one goes in. You want to keep having them kind of twisted still, and especially for for high quality ropes, you would want a marling spike. Um, lower quality ropes usually have less twist in them, so that they don't hold that twist as good. Okay, so over this one, under that one. Let's see. Uh, let's see. See. So this is, I would say this is not the tightest of twists, but it's not as bad either as I've seen some of my ropes have been. So like that. You want to pull it tight, but maybe not too tight because then it kind of bunches up. And then you start again. So where it comes out, it goes over, goes over the next one and then under. So it goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay, so you want to pull through, but not not too much because then you get problems. So short splicing, short splicing is what I'm doing now, and of course that begs the question: What is a long splice then? Well, a long splice is is basically you can see that it it gets a lot thicker here, and long splicing is when you kind of reconstruct the rope so that the rope doesn't thicken up, but you have to do that over a long, long distance. You have to do that over a couple of feet so that you get enough friction in the splice so that the, the rope holds. And for modern ropes, that is quite a hassle because they are more slippery than natural fiber ones uh, since they're plastic. So that you, you may have to make an even longer splice and you gradually thin these down so that they meet or from a couple of feet away you 
gradually take fibers out. Okay, so now I'll go again. So now I've done, what, one, two tucks. And for nat natural fiber ones, you do want to do at least three. For plastic ones, I think the recommendation is five. I've done an eye splice in an anchor line, and I just did that. I think that splice is a feet long or something like that. So uh, maybe 10 tucks or something because you, you do not want a anchor line to let go of the anchor. That that's is not a good situation. Okay, so just one more here. Oh, so this is why you would want the morning spike because then it'd be much easier. So like that. And now since this is long enough to to kind of hold itself for a while, I'm going to start on the other end here. So carefully cut this. This is just a sheep string. I think it's a household string that you would use for um, when you're doing steaks in the oven or stuff to tie around there, but I'm not sure. It's just the sheep crab one, uh, sacrificial one. And this one, as well, before I continue. And then you do exactly the same here. So, but it kind of goes in the opposite direction. So this comes out here and there's no way to, to tuck this way. So you have to tuck this way. So it goes over this, and then it should go under the next one. Like that. Then I usually do this lap, or this way. So this one, go over this one, under that one. And then the last one to get some, some symmetry into this. Okay. Pull them tight. Okay. Yeah. I accidentally, I accidentally cut somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter for my application. Um, why would you do a splice? You might ask. Well, for permanent joining of two lines, um, a splice is a good way because it holds quite good. Uh, a knot typically only holds 40, that's a very bad knot, to 65, 70% of the rope's strength, while a splice uh, retains upwards of 95% of the rope's strength. So if you want to have a permanent joining of two lines, uh, you would do well off creating a splice in the rope or between the ropes. Okay, so that's one tuck, I believe. No, okay, I think this is uh, So, I think one more tuck here. Yeah, one more tuck. And then I'm going to start thinning, this, thinning the strands because, okay, I'll do it this way, this way. Because this is such a thick section, basically you have two ropes here, right? To add strength. So uh, this is not entirely correct, but you basically have two times the breaking strength in the splice than you would have in the rope elsewhere. So in the in kind of this here, when the splice starts, you have a really abrupt um, change of breaking strength so you would have a an indicator of fracture here so to minimize this indication of fracture you can either just continue with one of them also you stop with this one and you start 
one tuck more with these two, and then you stop, for example, that one, and then you do the last tuck with this one. That's called the fisherman's splice, I think. But what I am going to do, I'm going to see if I can. How many do we have here? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. So I think I'm I'm going to do like this. I'm going to cut. And for sure, if you want to have this for strength application with with a plastic group, you would you would want to make them this spice a little longer. So maybe when you, if you remember in the beginning of the video when I measured, you might want to go up to 15. So I'm just going to cut, and I'm going to cut away half of the strands here, like that. And if you want to make a nice splice, you, you make sure that these are underneath here when you continue uh, tucking. And we'll see, we'll keep that in the meantime. And I'm going to measure, take four here as well. I'm going to take one, two, three, four. And I'm going to presume that the, the strands have the same amount because that seems reasonable. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And as you can see, I'm kind of trying to see what parts of the strand, or the strands of the strand, if you can say so. So unfortunately, the camera died on me. But what I ended up doing here was I tapered this part, the white part I tapered. So I cut off strands and then continue tucking. And then I did a whipping around to keep keep everything in place. And then on this end, I did a fisherman's splice ending. So it kind of is the same idea that you distribute the loads over a, a greater distance so that you don't get this sharp indicator of uh, break, indicator of fracture. It kind of works, but it works in a different way. Instead, you just taper the whole rope, so to say. So one of the strands end here, the next one end here, and the last one end here. And it kind of looks funky, but it's basically the same idea. So that was all. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in another video here at Knots and Ropes.